Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the Skookum Report. I've got a real good Bigfoot encounter today. It's an email from a gentleman named Jeffrey Lilly. And it's about his uncle Doug Hogan, who was uh, a Green Beret, did four tours in Vietnam. First, I want to send a, a Skookum Report shout out and send support. Skookum Report support. How do you like that? Say that ten times real fast. Steve at How to Hunt. Man, he's been really going through it the past couple days. I don't know if you all keep up with his channel, but um, the powers that be took uh, some of his stuff down, and, and they've been doing that for a while here and there. And um, I just, I, I would say go to his channel and read what he put up today. I support you, Steve. What you're doing is a good thing. Um, keep fighting the good fight. Keep doing what is right. You're helping tons and tons of people. And it's a good, good thing. I support you, and I hope that all of everybody that listens to the Skookum Report will back me up on this. Okay, so this first Bigfoot encounter, again, it's uh, by Jeffrey Lilly, and it's the Doug Hogan story. And bear with me, because I think this was voice to text. So the way it's written out, um, sometimes it can be difficult to read with the cadence but uh, I'll do my best. My uncle Doug Hogan was my idol. He moved to live in California when I was 14, but he would come back and visit us often. He came back one summer to visit, and then he and Dad were flying back out there for a Metallica concert. Why I had forgotten about all this, I will never know. It's just what happens when you drink and drug, and after you go through the hell and torment as I did growing up, and then seeing the things that I did in life, you forget a lot of important stuff, and I can understand that. And uh, he says, we were going down uh, the Ohio River night fishing, and we were drinking. We had a bonfire going. Uh, the fish weren't biting that night, so this was going to be a flat-out night of hell. Um, we were having a good time drinking a couple, but then Uncle Doug's eyes changed, and I could tell it was getting ready to get deep. But how deep? I don't know. I was excited as hell. And it was just Dad and me and Uncle Doug. And he really missed us, so this, this was going to be mind-blowing, I had a feeling. He got quiet for a moment, and then here it came. He said, now, Junior, you know I've seen some stuff in my life that no one will ever dream of seeing. And I'm cleaning up some of the language, but um, he said, you know I've seen some, of the, some stuff in life that no one will ever dream of seeing. And you know this is true. You've seen my dog tags. You've seen my gear. You've seen my service pistol, all of it. So you know what un Uncle Doug has done in life. And I replied, oh, yes, there's no doubt. After his service, he was invited every year to the White House for a dinner, but he never went. Not even once. But why? Well, here's the answer. Now it gets deep, but it's true. He let it all out on that riverbank about having to take out certain people he didn't want to, but he had no choice. Fighting with others he had uh, to fight with, but that's just how it went with war. And that changed to a totally different subject. The subject of everything you hear about, myths and legends. He said stuff, all of it was true. They hide it, they cover it up in every way, shape, or form that they have that whatever they have to do, they will do it to cover it up. Everything you've ever heard about being covered up is totally true, and there's more than that, he said. He said, I've seen so much crazy stuff all over the damn world. They sent me, I mean, come on, he said, four tours alone in Vietnam. The stuff I've seen in them jungles alone was crazy, he said. Strange creatures, an ape-like animal, like a smaller version of the stories he heard back home, running around the woods day and night. Many soldiers had seen them. They joked that it was the weed they were smoking. And they knew what they had seen and encountered. And stuff, you're at war, you're on full alert, senses in overdrive. You're looking for anything that resembles a stick figure, even. That's how the mind works in your favor. You have extra perception of everything. And at night, you know what you're hearing. A loud animal or creature out there making whooping sounds and other weird-ass noises as it as it's breaking tree limbs and smashing stuff up, whatever it could do to make itself known. 
It didn't like everyone in its home clearly, and, and he was upset. Hell, I don't blame them. It was a beautiful place until we got there and destroyed it. These were not like the Bigfoots or Sasquatches from the States. These were like four and a half, five foot tall and averaged about 250 to 350 pounds. Wow, that's heavy for four and a half, five foot tall. I guess they were bulky and they would be seen sometimes in the day. Marines would mostly spot them while out on patrol at night and he said that's when they could be seen on the forest floor wandering about. Once in a while he would hear of a report of a creature or creatures being spotted at night but he said they moved so much faster at night it was hard to see them. There were reports of food being taken from the camps as the soldiers slept and some would sneak in and out and take whatever they could. Sometimes Marines whole packs were being taken. With all of the soldier's supplies, his food rations, his mail from home, cigarettes, etc. They were very fast and very silent. Unless they had want their presence known, the sounds were wild whooping and that of someone speaking wild rambling gibberish. Clearly we were shaken by it. Hell, we weren't informed of anything like that being out there living before we went into battle. But after the fact, the soldiers were just told by their superiors, you soldiers should be able to deal with anything out there. That's what you're trained for, so deal with it. We're in war here, and that is just what it is. But at night, they seemed to light up and move about and feed and drink at the time. He said, Junior, everything you've been told is false, is true. Trust Uncle Doug, I know. Why do you think I never have gone once to eat at the White House? Not once. And it's true, he never did go. Not one time, this being a decorated Green Beret, Purple Heart, Medal for Valor. Medal after medal he had been awarded for his actions in the field. They don't make men like him anymore, and you better believe that. Steve from How to Hunt, oh, I was just talking about him, is who made me remember this story from my Uncle Doug. He was the man. He finally passed from cancer and the Agent Orange used in the rockets and bombs of napalm from the Vietnam War and it got the best of him. He was a great man to have gone through so much. He was always sound mentally. He was tough as nails. And the stuff he'd seen over there, Junior, he'd say, the stuff I'd seen, not normal stuff at all. God bless his soul and the most kind and loyal man I ever knew. Him and my dad were best friends for many years, and he was one bad mofo, I gotta say. That four tours in Vietnam, the last year in, he got his legs blown off, but lived. They had made him a set of fake legs to get about on, and he walked normal. Man, he was my hero. Rest in peace, Uncle Doug Hogan. Phew. That's quite a bit. Um... The first time I read that deep into it, and he mentioned Steve from How to Hunt. It's a coincidence, because I was just talking about supporting him. So that fits together really well. Wow, I'm, I'm just, I was going to do another short story, but I'm just going to leave this one all to its own. I, I think that is going to make a lot of people think about more than one thing. Jeff, God bless you, man. Thank you for sending this in to me. He has one other one he sent in that I'll be doing soon and, and uh, coming up here in the future. But this one, I read part of it and I thought, man, I got to I got to get this one out. So. All right, everybody. Oh, crap. I almost forgot to tell you. all um, If you or anybody, you know, I'm all shook up reading this story. It's got me. Got me beside myself, man. Um, if you or anybody you know seen a Bigfoot or had a Bigfoot encounter or anything you'd like to have on the show here, just put it down in an email. Shoot it off to me at skookumreport at gmail.com. That's skookumreport at gmail.com. And I'll be sure to get it up on the show for you. It's not a problem. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment. Say hi. I really enjoy talking to you guys. i um, meeting so many cool people, especially uh, yesterday's and the day before. A lot of people commenting, and, and I, I just really appreciate you guys. You make it all worthwhile. Um, Big Mike, everybody. So, um, that's it for today, I guess. And uh, I just want to say God bless you guys, and I'll see you again real soon. 
on the Skookum Report. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.